film uh, you know, embodies a search for ideas and it's executed with a supreme inventiveness. Uh, those are the qualities that make us so happy to present on our closing night. It's my great pleasure to bring to the stage the director, Michelle Gondry. Oh. So uh, I did this film in, a, uh, like, as a hobby in some ways. And, uh, uh, I, I did it over the course of uh, three or four years um, while I was shooting other movies, and it was always uh, um, I felt a great freedom uh, uh, in doing it uh, because it was just a piece of paper, my sharpie, and my camera. And uh, it was a huge contrast with the other production I was doing at the time. And, uh, uh, I didn't know if it would end up like that. I'm very uh, excited that it's at the festival and, uh, uh, and so many people, including Noam, to, to watch it tonight. So I hope you like it. And uh, thank you for coming. What was really uh, attracting me is your scientific work and uh, it's always great to see uh, to be able to uh, capture uh, the image and the voice of somebody uh, alive who, who has already uh, such a huge legacy and uh, because i watch uh, uh, i was talking about richard feynman and, and uh, all those great scientists who are not here anymore and i wish i had known them and i, I thought it would it was important for me to try to establish that what is your process, you know, when you're t tackling a scientific question, when you're coming up against an aporia in your work? It's kind of like uh, what Michel captured so uh, 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 with such uh, remarkable artistry in the film. Uh, it's usually a matter of going for a walk, uh, thinking about things, uh, talking to somebody, uh, hoping that somehow a uh, uh, what looks uh, paradoxical or uh, impossible will somehow fall into place. Uh, how it happens, I don't think anyone knows. It's, I'm sure it's the same when you're, uh, anyone's uh, creating an artistic work, just somehow comes. Well, the, the point that uh, Michel emphasized correctly is, and at least has been a driving force to me, not for everyone in the field, is uh, to try to show what ought to be true, to try to pr demonstrate what ought to be true. It ought to be true for various reasons, some of which indicated in the film, that the basic essential nature of language is first of all uniform for all languages, which is why children can learn any of them, and is also fundamentally very simple. But when you look at the data of language, it looks extremely complex. Uh, uh, but that's true of anything you don't understand. Uh, if there's anything you don't understand, it looks hopelessly complex. Uh, the idea is to try to see if you can extricate from the complexity uh, fundamental principles uh, which somehow make things fall into place which otherwise didn't make any sense, like the one principle that was mentioned at the end of the film about uh, seeking uh, minimal structural distance. You can pursue that much farther, and a lot of things fall into place, including the, the way in which uh, quite complex sentences are interpreted if you continue to pursue the idea that there just has to be fundamentally simple processes that interplay in a way which yields uh, observed complexity. So that's the basic work that I'm involved in. There is some uh, thing that I remember uh, figuring out uh, uh, by just my uh, questioning, my own questioning. Uh, and, uh, um, and sometimes I would verify the answer, but I always have this uh, curiosity to uh, understand uh, what was going on with the world. And uh, uh, when I was a kid, uh, I, Catholicism didn't work. Uh, we, I went to some cult and had some. Uh, my mother took me to some meetings that were really weird, mm -hmm. and it didn't satisfy me. And I found in science uh, uh, some 
some more uh, constructive uh, answer that the, the idea uh, that you can build something on the ground that people uh, agree upon it's, and it's one of the things that uh, attracted to Noam's work and philosophy it's this idea that you uh, uh, like French philosophers they are, say oh, everything is in, it's up in the air and it's foggy and uh, it's uh, it's very abstract and I think it's important that you can uh, try to agree on, on the ground that, so you can build on. So in my movies, uh, I mean, it's not necessarily apparent, but uh, I, I always had this curiosity. I don't want to be corrupting the youth. So I'm no, no, sure. we want to be much sure to tell the truth, but tell the truth. The truth is I have absolutely no professional credentials. I literally, which is why I'm teaching at MIT, where they didn't, look, that's absolutely true, where they didn't care, you know. It's a science-based university, they didn't care if you had a guild card and something or other. So, uh, well, you saw a little of it there, but I hated high school. It was, an, it was the academic high school in the city, the one that all the kids went to who were going to go to college, so teachers didn't really have to work very hard, because we were going to pass the exams anyway, and I couldn't stand it. And uh, essentially, never had uh, I never had much of a formal education. It was uh, one of the greatest educations, educational experiences I ever had in those four years. It was at Harvard. It was to have a desk in the stacks. In those days, the stacks were open. Not anymore. A graduate student had a a little desk in the stacks, and you had the whole of Widener Library, this amazing library there. You can kind of walk around and pick things out from all kind of places, things you never heard of, and pursue them. That was a fantastic experience. I think it's a great way to get an education. I remember the first time I, uh, when I showed the first half of the film to you, Noam, uh, you, you said basically at the end of I showed it to you to, uh, on my computer, as you see in the film. And you say, okay, I agree with it. Basically, you're saying that you agreed with yourself, which I think is, <laughs> which is great. And uh, to me, it, it, I mean, I understand what you meant, basically. It, it meant that, uh, and it, I was very uh, happy about it. It meant that you had, had not distorted what, uh, what you were saying. Um, but I'd say, then you added, but it's going to take few more generation uh, for people to accept that, talking about uh, uh, still about generative grammar and the, the old conception of the, uh, the referential uh, assumption, for instance. And I was telling you, uh, so I'm not upset that you won't be here to witness that. Uh, and you said, uh, no, I, I don't care about that. What I care is like maybe nobody will be here because of the climate change and uh, all the risk. <laughs> And I think it's, uh, I really wanted to add that at the end, but I, f I, I didn't do it. But I, I think it, I think it summarizes uh, Noam's uh, priorities. My own feel impression over you know, 75 years of activism is that uh, the level of uh, energy and dedication and commitment, especially on part of young people today, is as high as anything I can remember outside of maybe a few very brief peaks, uh, like maybe 1968, 69. But it's quite substantial. Uh, but you're right that there are very intensive pressures to try to beat it back. Well, actually, that was uh, my 10-year-old self. I did used to have nightmares about the idea that when I die, there is a spark of consciousness which basically creates the world. Is the world going to disappear if this spark of consciousness disappears? And how do I know it won't? How do I know there's anything there except what I'm conscious of? So if this spark disappears, it's all gone. Uh, later, when I got older, I thought that this is a rather classical concern and a lot of thought and uh, writing and, and agony and so on about it. But uh, as you get older, you just realize, look, that's not true. The world's going to go on, uh, your children will be alive, your grandchildren, your friends, uh, other people's children, the children of those uh, villagers in Colombia who you saw there and so on, and uh, the world will go on. 
it'll go on without me, but uh, okay, went on for a long time without me, and a lot of it goes on without me, and that'll continue to happen. It's, uh, it just seems like, to me at least, seems like less and less of a problem as you get older. It becomes easy, easy to understand why this is really not something to be concerned about.